hello squaddies how are you doing welcome back to our youtube channel and you know when you see me it's another article so buckle up and come along for the ride um today we'll be reading an article from e-news yeah and it seems like it's more gossip from the you know i'm um, from the end game book and at this point i'm convinced <laughs> that we will finish reading the book way before we even read the book, you know? Um, so, uh, the title of the article is What Kate Middleton Really Thinks of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Um, I guess we all have an idea. She's a jealous woman. <laughs> anyway, but let's see. Let's see what Omid had to say about it, right? Um... Omid Omid Scobie's new book Endgame uncovered Kate Middleton's feelings about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle after the couple stepped back from their duties as senior royals. And I'm just like, after they stepped back, um, are you kind of jealous because you don't have the courage to do something like that? But again, let's see. Um. The tea is piping hot in Omid Scobie's new book about the British monarchy. For one, Endgame inside the royal family and the monarchy's fight for survival details are um, details alleged friction within the royal family, particularly between Kate Middleton and Meghan Markle. While the Princess of Wales was close to um, was close with brother-in-law Prince Harry for years, a source who used to work for Kate said in the book that the 41-year-old was never a big fan of Meghan. I wonder why is that? <laughs> I wonder. And ever since Harry, 39 years old, and Meghan, 42 years, stepped back from their duties as senior royals and relocated to California in 2020, the tension has only continued to mount according to end game. Mm -hmm. Kate, who married Harry's brother, Prince William, in 2011, is now pretty much done with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex per Endgame. Though she will always um, look back fondly on the good times she shared with Harry, according to another source who knows the family, Kate does not trust the couple after all their interviews. Um, after all their interviews... <laughs> You know, after the truth came out, you know, about the fact that um, Megan hurts you, but it's actually the other way around. You're the one um, who ke who kept hurting her. Is that the kind of interview you, you're talking about? Because we all know that um, when Harry and Megan were on interview, they were just talking the truth about what really went on and not what the tabloids were, um, you know, were saying what's going on in the palace. Um, they were just like, you know what, it's by time we clear the airwaves. It's by time we tell our truth. And I'm like, hold up, hold up, kids. Would you have preferred for Megan to keep being called the bad guy? You know, for you to keep liking her, for you to keep having a good relationship with your brother-in-law. Is that what you wanted? Um, like, for one woman to be down so that, you you know, your life can be perfect. You can have perfect relationships with your, you know, with your brother-in-law. Is that what you wanted? Um, for Harry to have a relationship with you, would was it supposed to cost him... Um, you know the life of his wife because let's be honest these tablets had really driven megan to the corner now is that what you wanted was that your preference dear princess oh we just dreamed right <laughs> yeah so and if nothing else i think this comment really shows us how selfish kate middleton is because if that's what she wanted she wanted in short, she wanted Harry all to herself. 
right? <laughs> anyway, continuing. Indeed, Harry and Meghan have made some explosive allegations to the press after moving away from the royal institution. Most notably, the pair alleged that a member of the royal household questioned how dark the color of their son Archie Harrison's skin would be prior to his birth in 2019. And I'm just wondering, um, Kate, imagine this is your kid. You have not even give, given birth to him. And people are already like, how dark is the child going to be? Like... Is that anyone's concern? Are those questions that you should be asking? You know, and did you want such information that there are such people in the palace to stay hidden, to stay undercover, you know, for your peace of mind, for you to have a good relationship with these people? Um, did you prefer Harry and Meghan to stay close to the palace so that, you know, to stay even in the UK so that the tablets can keep breaching their privacy, you know, finding information about them, you know, and just creating untrue stories about them? Is that what you preferred? You know, for you to have a relationship with them, for you to like Meghan, for you to like Harry? Yes. Is that what you wanted and we would stop asking this question that conversation i am never going to share but at the time it was awkward harry who also shares two-year-old daughter lilibet um lily diana with megan said during the couple's 2021 interview with oprah winfrey i was a bit shocked in endgame um, sources said Harry's dad, King Charles III, wrote to Meghan following the interview to say that he did not feel the family member's remark regarding skin color were made with ill or casual prejudice. However, um, Meghan responded uh, by explaining how the conversation was an example of lingering unconscious bias and ignorance i love that that needed to be addressed according to the book um Inus has reached out to buckingham palace um as well as harry and megan's rep for comments but hasn't had back so yeah simply put you know these 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 are some of the things that you know um Megan and Harry literally had to talk about so that they can even fight that unconscious bias and ignorance because as I've said before sometimes people make comments because they don't know that such comments um, can hurt people sometimes, sometimes people talk out of ignorance you know and it's not a crime to be told that you know what here and here it was wrong for you to do it like that and you should never you know do it like that again you know but we all know we we all understand in the palace there was no space for that for such conversations and as i've said this was the only way for harry and megan to get the attention of the people in the palace um um, them going to the media, them creating a docu series was the only way to not only target the you know the royal family as a unit, but also the you know because basically um, the UK let's say it's just a family as a whole. It was also a message for them to uh, a means for them to send the message about you know this ignorance you know to the public and tell them you know what it's not right if you're in a certain situation and you behave like this you know because these can end up hurting another person and that is not a crime and i'm like kate um did you want harry and megan to stay in silence you know because this is their fight they have to fight this fight not only for themselves but they have to fight this fight for their kids harry has to continue the fight that his mother began you know the fight of what goes on in the palace of you know people being used as means to create stories for the royals and to make sure that the r word is trending this is a fight that was already begun by his mother and he had a role to take it up 
and i believe eventually even if he didn't meet megan but thank god he met megan the love of his life um eventually he would have found his way to start these fights so i'm like kate you you love the silence harry the harry that just follows rules the harry that does not think on his own he's just waiting to be told you know what today go here follow orders a b c d well if you can't handle this new version of harry well it's your loss because you're literally missing out you could learn a lot from him and from megan anyway from me to you until the next episode bye bye